Trick or Treat Jewelry Making Party with Jesse James Beads and Soft, Less, Soft Flex Company. Hello. I am your host of this evening, your ghost host. My name is Sarah James, and I am so thrilled to offer you these deliciously, hauntingly gorgeous pieces of jewelry represented by Softlex and Jesse James Beads and presented tonight by the amazingly talented, spooky, talented ladies, Kristen Fagan from Softlex and Brittany Chavers representing Jesse James Beads. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Sarah James. How are you? What a lovely, spooky, fantastic introduction. Oh, I am feeling just thrilling and chilling tonight, my friend. It is 7 p.m. on the East Coast and 4 p.m. on the Pacific Standard Time, and we are getting ready to dive into some really cool, haunting projects. And what better time of year? Halloween is right around the corner. Kristen, how are you feeling this Halloween season? Oh, I am feeling ready for some cool temps and for some pumpkin treats and just to be out. I love this time of year to see the leaves changing. And, um, you know, my kids are getting older, so it's a lot of fun for me to see all the little kids dressed up nowadays. <laughs> and I think it just goes to show you that, you know, age is just a state of mind. You can dress up no matter how old you are, and we don't need to tell how that is right now. But I am enjoying being a ghostly skeleton this evening. And, and Kristen, you look quite bewitching yourself. I am. I am a spider queen and I have a fantastic spider inspired project to share with everyone tonight. Um, funny story, I am a spider queen like every year. <laughs> Are you a spider queen the year throughout? Do you just take the cape and put it in the closet, but still the spider queen I'm is still, still the spider queen within, right? Um, yeah, I, you know, I found this probably like eight years ago, this cape, and I just loved it. And I take it out every single year and I put it and I put it on. See, she's Here bewitching I something in the background already. Did everyone hear that? Is my house haunted? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> uh, and so it's pretty funny around here. My one um, teen actually even said when I took this out yesterday, he goes, oh, the once a year cape came out. <laughs> so I think it's fun to wear it every year and I add stuff to it. And so to this year, I'm gonna be making myself some fantastic jewelry to add to my costume that I will get use out of year after year after year. <laughs> And isn't that so wonderful when you can create your piece yourself a piece of jewelry that you can wear for a special occasion like Halloween or perhaps the holidays coming up, but particularly Halloween. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And that is one of the reasons why Jesse James Beads and Softlex Company teamed up together to create the trick or treat jewelry making party. So what is this exactly? What's going on right now? So what we've done is we've created a bundle of beads from Jesse James Beads and a bundle of findings from Softlex Company. Those are the treats. So you were able to go online and purchase the beads from Jesse James and the findings from Softlex and then come and show up right here, right now for this jewelry making party to be able to make one, two projects tonight and three, four projects tomorrow, plus a bonus after party. That is the trick-or-treat jewelry making party in a nutshell. 
but we have this public open to all of our friends on Facebook. So you can watch along, join in on the fun, comment here with your friends in the commentary, and of course, say hello to us. Kristen has our very, very first project of the event. Kristen, tell us what we're about to make. Oh, we are going to make a spider queen necklace, of course. So in our fun little packages here, we've got some soft flex beading wire. So we'll be using that to string our design. We had some um, chain from Jesse James beads. So that will be added to it. And we got this fun, creepy little plastic spider, which was really meant to just be a little fun drop in the package, but I, of course, needed to do something with it. So we are going to make a pendant out of this spider, and I'm going to show you how to crimp, and I'm going to show you how to wrap, wire wrap that spider with soft flex craft wire. Um, we're just going to have a great time. Amazing. I am so excited to see what you whip up, Kristen, and as I'm about to spotlight your camera right now so that okay. you can show us all of the treats, and Better then... Fun. Tell us how you do your tricks. Spotlight coming at you right now. Thank you everyone that's tuning in and don't forget to say hello in the comments. We're so happy that you're here. Yeah, I'm gonna try and see if I can see comments because as of right now, I don't have any up and I wanna see Give what- All right, here's the spotlight of our treats. Ooh, there we go. All right, so can everyone see this really well? It is such a wonderful delight. I have some of my favorite little gems here for our haunting little party. I've got some Labradorite and a little quartz. This is actually called the steel celestial quartz and some amethyst as well. I've got my package right here from Jesse James Beads, and this is the strand we're going to be working with for our Spider Queen necklace. And then I have my package over here from Softlex Company. So Sarah, if you see any comments, you can pop in and just um, give me a heads up because I don't have any um, information on my screen. Sure, I'd be happy to do that for you. Thanks. So let's start with this wonderful little package here from Jesse James Beads. This has this fantastic Halloween bead mix in fun purples, greens, oranges, silver findings, all of this delightful stuff. I am only using one bead from this mix today. <laughs> so you will have to stay tuned for the other fabulous designers because they will be coming up with um, designs from this mix. I have a, let's see if I can find it. I probably had it on top. We have one little um, rhinestone bead that we are gonna pull out of this mix for our spider. So I will find that, put that aside for now. Got these adorable jack-o'-lanterns in two different sizes. How sweet and hauntingly cute are those? We had two bead strands from Jesse James Beads. This is the first one. Really fun purples, greens, and pinks in here. And then this one is the second one. And this is the one we're gonna be playing with today. So I'll put this one aside. Also some fantastic fairy silk, and I cannot wait to see what my fellow designer friends, Deb, Brittany, and Sarah, what one of them may come up with using this, because that is new to me. And then we've got two wonderful packages of the chain reaction. 
And I'm gonna be using one of these today. So you take out one of these packages, your red and black bead strand, and your plastic spider, which this one came in the Softlex pack. So let's open up that one next and see all of the treats we have. So first up is the Softlex Black Magic Trios, which is a wonderful combination of the black onyx, the purple, and the green peridot Softlex beading wire in medium diameter, 0.019. This is our all-purpose wire. It is good for all sorts of different beads, minerals, metal beads, glass. It is a stainless steel product. So it has 49 strands of um, woven stainless steel. Then it's colored and has a nice nylon coating. It's super flexible, really, really nice to work with. So we've got three fun colors. We'll be playing with the black onyx color today. Softlex craft wire. Um, this is the non-tarnished silver plated in 24 gauge. You may have gotten the silver or you may have gotten the black. You have the option to choose um, from softlexcompany.com when you were checking out. I have the silver here. If you have the black, it'll work just fine. The silver actually works a little bit better for me because you'll be able to see what I'm doing on this spider. But if you have the black, it'll just sort of fade into the background, which is great too. We've got a generous pack of sterling silver two by two millimeter crimp tubes from Softlex Company, as well as a little findings pack. And this has in it a lot of ear wires. So silver plated ear wires, we've got a ton to work with. You're gonna have one pair of Halloween charms. I have the jack-o'-lantern here, but it could have been, a, I believe a ghost or a bat or the jack-o'-lantern. So that was sort of a surprise. Everyone's, it's a little different. And then we've got three lobster clasps. So I am gonna be using one of these. I'm gonna pull that one aside. And I'm also gonna be using uh, four of the crimp tubes. So we've got our craft wire. I'm gonna keep the black onyx over here. I'll move these two aside and then I'll keep my crimp tubes out also. And then here's a little chain reaction we're gonna be using. And we got a little bead that was hiding there. <laughs> well, how's it going, Sarah? Does anyone have any questions? Everyone is loving the kit so much. Terry, hi, Terry, is saying beautiful materials with these kits, and she loves everything. I could not agree with you more, my friend Terry. So true. It's such a great look at all this. Look at all that sparkle so much fun color too and i really like how you're gonna see like i'm gonna be in this sort of spooky reds blacks tones but wait till you see some of what the other designers are making there'll be some that are really cute and some that are really elegant and it's just a, such a wonderful mix of stuff that's going to be created from these items you know we are so lucky to have such cool products to play with for one and for the other one, just such amazing and talented designers like yourself, Kristen, and like Brittany coming up later, Sarah and Deb Floros tomorrow. You guys all have such wonderful design aesthetics. And for us to be able to learn from you really is such a treat. It's not a trick at all. It's a total treat. <laughs> total treat. So this is the one bead that I'm pulling out of the bead mix. It's the little rhinestone bead. I love it going to go um, on top of our spider. So maybe we'll do the spider first. So we're going to wire up this, this little beauty. And it was really funny because I, 
I, as soon as I saw the package, I was like, oh, I got to do something with this spider. So then I messaged the office and I was just like, everyone got one of these, I hope, right? <laughs> James was like, yeah, but it wasn't meant to do anything with. And I'm like, well, I'm doing something with it. <laughs> so, because that's what sort of grabbed my attention. I, you know, like I said, I'm the spider queen here. So every year, <laughs> just up as a spider. And I needed a, I needed a new spider to add to my costume. So I'm going to cut 10 inches of this 24 gauge craft wire. And this is pretty soft. So I'm just going to take my fingers and kind of run through it just to straighten it out a little bit. And I know spiders are kind of creepy little crawlers, right? But they have such amazing symbolism. And oh, one of the, oh, so sorry. Oh, tell, go ahead. <laughs> tell us what they mean, Kristen. Yeah, so they are an ancient symbol of mystery, of power, of growth. Um, and we also can think about their web, right? That they are creators and they are weavers. And so, they're just a really, really cool. Um, I don't really want to see too many. In the <laughs> I don't want to see a big spider, but hey, I'll totally get down with some spider symbolism and have a little fun with my jewelry <laughs> and bring some spiders in that way, right? So I'm going to go ahead and center my wire on the front of my spider here right where the little indent is, just like so. And I'm just gonna tuck it, tuck it behind and cross the wires like that. Super simple. You don't have to worry too much about what's going on the back because that's the back of your pendant. So we're just gonna take one wire crisscross it down to the bottom and then pull it up. And like I said, 24 gauge is really soft. So I'm just doing this with my fingers at this point. And I think of it like I'm adding a little backpack to my spider. <laughs> so we've taken this wire on this side and then going up the legs and over. And then we just flip it around so you can see what's going on on the back here. So we crisscrossed it. And then we went down and up straight across. And now what I'm going to do is going to crisscross it again. And then I'm going to take this wire and tuck it through and then take this wire and tuck it through there. So take one side and then we're just sort of doing this to give it a little, um, Give it a little stability. And now you might need to pull your tools out. So I'm gonna grab a little chain nose plier and just in case you pulled it a little tight like I did, make a little space so that I can get my wire to go down. Easier. I might even just use my tool this way. I put his backpack on too tight. There we go. I'm not sure why I decided that it had a backpack, but <laughs> it just sort of did. <laughs> okay, so now I'm crisscrossing that wire down in there. And then I'm gonna take this one and go down on this side. So while I'm doing this, I will just mention a little bit about a spider's web again. So one of the really nice symbolisms about a spider's web is that um, they weave their web just as we need to weave the web of our lives. And it serves as a reminder that all of our choices are connected to one another. And when we see a spider, it's a reminder to be mindful of all of the different things that we choose to do in our lives and the choices that we're making. 
Okay, so let me just straighten these out. So I've got them tucked in just under that first wire there. I'll turn it to the side. And then I'm just gonna take them and twist. I'm just gonna twist a few times. And then I'm gonna point it up. So I twisted and then I point it up. And like I said, it's not like super duper pretty, but it'll work. <laughs> it'll stay, it'll work and stay stable. And that is on the back of your spider, right? So now I'm gonna take my chain nose plier and I'm gonna just tuck in the wires into these little corners here really slowly just to tighten it up a little bit. So I just went into the little crevices and tucked that up. So now we're gonna take our two wires and I can even just trim them so that they're same size. And slide down this little rhinestone bead, just like so. So it's gonna kind of sit right behind the little antenna. That's what the back looks like. And that's what the front looks like. And then we'll take our chain nose pliers. I'm gonna bend my wires at a 90 degree angle, just like that. And then I'm gonna use this tool, which is a wire looping tool. It's a multi-size mandrel wire looping tool. It's got six different mandrel sizes. You can also use just a regular round nose plier if that's what you have on hand. And I'm gonna show you why I like this tool. So I'm just gonna grab a hold of my wire right where I bent it. I'm gonna go up and over. I'm taking the two wires. Like I said, 24 gauge is pretty thin. So I decided to just keep both wires there so that I can add a little bit of extra um, security to the pendant. So after you twist your wires around your tool, I'm just gonna rotate my tool so that I can get the bottom wires to come full around like so. And I'm gonna Go up, open up my pliers and go around one more time. And pull it to the front. And then what you can do, because these pliers are not tapered, they're just uh, the same length all the way. So you can even make it bigger if you wanted to. And then you can also kind of squish your wire back down I'm just using my fingers to squish those coils back down towards the end of that um, mandrel. And that just kind of cleans it up a little bit, makes it nice and tight. So I'm gonna keep the wires on my mandrel, get the little, the little legs out of there. And I'm gonna use these two end pieces to just wrap around a few times. And I still have both wires I'm grabbing. And I kept it on the mandrel because it is so soft, the wire that if I took it off and tried to squeeze it this way, like I normally would, if I were to go like that with the chain nose pliers and squeeze it, I probably would um, affect the shape a little bit. So that's why I wanted to keep them on the mandrel. So just go around two times, maybe three, and then you can trim off any excess. I'm using a pair of flush cutters. Trim off the excess wire, and then you can come back in with your chain nose pliers and just tuck those little end pieces in. And there we have our little pendant. 
He is so cute, Kristen. <laughs> Isn't he cute? And yeah. so if you have black wire, it'll sort of disappear a little bit more. And then, but I still think it works really, really cutely with the silver wire. <laughs> I love it. All right. So how are we doing? Is everyone having a good time? Any questions for me or doing okay? It seems we're having some F Facebook technical difficulties. People that have hopped out and are coming back in are having a little bit of trouble. Oh, uh, Facebook. I know. Oh, Facebook. Hasn't this been such a commonality these past few weeks? But I just want to make a, make a notice that all of these videos, all of the projects will be available for replay on the Softlex and the Jesse James Beads blog, as well as fingers crossed on Facebook. But if you can't get it there, you'll be able to get it on our blog. So that's, we'll just carry on, you know, we, we play the weather. Yeah. So like Sarah's saying, we are recording right now so that we will be able to have the video regardless if we have any issues with Facebook. Um, but hopefully it's there as well later on. Um, yeah. Like it seems like Lucinette. Hi, Lucinette. Lucinette, one of our JJB design ambassadors, is here on the comments, and she says that she believes it's happening on cell phones, but not if, for those that are watching it on their computer or TV. So thanks, Lucy, for that um, for that input. Very cool. Okay, that's good to know. This way, if some of you want to switch devices, that might be helpful if you're able to. Um, all right, so now we're going to move on to working on the necklace portion. So first things up is stringing our beads. So I went ahead and cut this strand. I don't know if I strung it in exactly the same pattern. So let me just kind of hold the pattern here for you for a minute. If you want to see, I cut it open and I don't remember if I put it back together exactly the same or not. <laughs> so. So that's where we're at. And I am using 20 inches of Softlex beading wire in the black onyx color. So I did that because I want my necklace to be around 18 inches. If you want a different size, you might change that slightly. But if you want to have it around 18 inches as well, then go ahead and cut yourself 20 inches of the Softlex beading wire in the black. You're gonna string on all of your beads. I just, I think it was this rose bead that just totally caught my eye and I couldn't stop thinking about it <laughs> with this strand. I was like, oh, this is definitely gonna be the one I'm gonna have to play with first because that bead is phenomenal. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Black Widow when I see my spider next to that bead. So I started in the center and strung each bead up on both sides. And then you're gonna hold up your wire and you're gonna find your center. So just kind of put your wires together so that your bead and hold your strand up so that your beads can fall into the center there. And then we'll use our handy dandy little bead stopper and clip that on one side. And now I know my beads are in the center of my strand because I'm gonna crimp on either side here to hold them in place. And so putting your little bead stopper or some way to hold it down so that you know um, when you go to crimp on this side, you don't accidentally push the beads off center. So we're gonna take two of our two by two millimeter crimps out. And I'm just gonna have a little scrap of black wire in addition, just something that is like two inches, maybe not even. Um, you're not, I'm gonna use just a teeny tiny bit of this. And I will show you why. Because when I crimp, I'm gonna use the magical crimping pliers. I don't know if you have seen these, but what they do is they take a crimp tube, a two millimeter by two millimeter crimp tube, and they turn it into a nice rounded kind of oval shaped little crimp bead. So it gives it a nice 
finished touch, but you do need to have two strands of beading wire running through your crimp for it to work properly. So when I'm working on a design like this, when I only have one strand, it is not gonna, it's not gonna crimp um, and hold that piece at all. It'll, it's just the way the tool is formed, it has to have at least two strands, sometimes three strands, but at least two running through. So that's why I use this little extra piece. And like I said, I'm only using a teeny tiny bit. This is even more than you need but you just take it and I string the crimp down on the necklace and then I take my little extra piece and I string that up through the crimp. This way I've now got 2.019 soft flex beading wire strands running through that crimp. And then we'll just trim off the little extra pieces. So here's the magical crimping plier. It has one notch. It's a half circle on either side. And what you wanna do is you wanna get that crimp right in the center. So you wanna see how there's that little notch there. I want that crimp to sit right in the center of that notch. And you wanna take your time and do it slowly. This tool takes a little bit of practice and give it a nice firm handshake. And what it will do is it'll pinch the four corners and turn it into a, let's see, who knows? Ravioli. <laughs> yes, that's Sarah always, Sarah Ayler always says a ravioli. So you have all four corners pinched and you want to <laughs> that little ravioli. That's how you know you had your crimp nice and centered. So now we got to turn it 90 degrees and place it back into that one notch ravioli time <laughs> and give it another squeeze and then I just take it and roll it around in there and you got to make sure you're centered the whole time so that's the only trick with this tool is if your crimp rolls out of that let me show it in there again see how it's really in that little it's like tucked in there so as long as it's tucked in there you're going to be good if it rolls out and you squeeze it when it's out of the little notch, then that's when you run into smashing it a little bit. So hopefully that was a nice good close up for those of you that could see it. And now I'm just gonna take my flush cutters and I'm gonna cut the tail off that little dummy piece. Be very careful not to cut your wire that is attached to your necklace. So I don't wanna cut this one, I wanna cut this little tail. And you can use the flush side of your crimper right up to your crimp. And just trim that off. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side to trim it off over here. And now we have a beautiful little crimp at the end of our beads on that strand. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So my bead stopper ensured that I had this right in the center. Now I could just take that off since this one's crimped over here to hold that in place. And we'll do the same thing over here. So now another tip when you're crimping is you don't want to crimp when it's straight like this and you don't and make it real tight. You want to make sure that your design has some flexibility. And a lot of times I'll crimp after I turn it into more of a U shape. And that will ensure that I have a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room for your necklace to lay nicely on your neck and also to not put too much pressure on those crimps. It kind of relieves a little bit of the tension. So same thing, I strung down my crimp on the necklace, then I'm adding the little dummy, the little extra piece of wire through there. So I have two. I'll make my little U shape to get my crimp in the right spot. And then I'm gonna pick up my crimping pliers, and get that crimp right in the center. Now I notice I want my crimp to go a little bit closer to my bead, so I'm not gonna squeeze it yet and I'm just gonna guide it a little bit closer. And then I'm gonna squeeze. 
and I'll take that out. And it is that, let's see if I can get it to focus. Maybe I'm too close. Ravioli, it's got some four pinched corners. Turn it 90 degrees, place it back in that one little notch. And then go around a few more times, making sure to keep it in that And then we can trim this off. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside for just a moment and I'm going to go and grab my chain because we're going to do the second part of our design here. So these are the little segments. This was just from the one piece of chain. These are the little segments that I have created. Let me open up. Let me open up a fresh one so you can see how it started. All right, so this comes in one long piece with the split ring right here on one end. And I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads of the rondelle beads with four links in between them. So I've got, I'm keeping that split ring. I'm using it so that I can attach my um, pendant to it. So the split ring is staying and I've got one bead and then four links, another bead and then three links. So I just cut off one of the links here. And then I have another section which is the same with one bead, four links, and then one bead and three links. So now I'm just gonna take this side and attach it to my little split ring. And a split ring is like a key ring, like it has a little double, a section that has a double, and you can use your finger nail to kind of pull that out. But there also is a cool tool called a split ring tool that you can use and you can just poke it right in there and that'll hold it open for you. And then you can slide on your chain. So I've got the ring in the center, the two black beads and then four links, two more black beads and then three links. And we're gonna also put this little guy in here. So we're gonna add him right in the center there for her. Actually spiders generally in cultures are, are considered female in, in many myths. And they're also regarded as like the creatrix of the universe in many legends, which I didn't know that. I mean, I knew they were considered creative and like a creatrix because of all of their um, weaving, but I didn't know that a lot of myths are considered the makers of the universe. I'll have to find out more. Does anyone know any other spider symbolism that I haven't mentioned? Maybe that I forgot about or just didn't even know? Share with us. I think I'm speaking for the group when I say that we are very intrigued by your spider knowledge. <laughs> spider queen, Kristen. <laughs> Leaving a web of information. Leaving a web of information. Yes. Oh my gosh. I wish I would remember a lot of this information like on my own. I just totally love learning about um, symbols and like the greater meaning. I'm gonna kind of just pick this up and put this a little closer to my face. <laughs> um, I think the split ring is uh, is getting me caught here. But yeah, I love learning about like symbolism and what it means when I see 
things like what if I saw a hummingbird like a few days in a row what does that mean or if I run into a spider you know what does that mean like I always feel like there's messages all around us and um it's so fun to to learn about it yay I got it on there um <laughs> and to create with it and then when you make stuff it like adds a whole nother level of magic and meaning behind it right <laughs> so now this isn't just like oh that's a fun spider necklace this is like the creator of the universe necklace <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be the bottom part and we're going to attach this to our softlex up here so we're just going to take the little ends and I played around with this with doing the crimp after the um, chain or before. And I found I liked the way it laid on my neck doing it after doing the crimping. So that's why I crimped first and then I'm doing the chain next. I think when I crimped, it just kind of made it a little bit stiffer. And when you just add it at the end, it allows it to move and have a little more flexibility. And I think it just lays a little nicer. So it just took that link that's right on there on the chain and we string it on to these soft legs. And that'll create the bottom part of our necklace. And now we're just gonna add our clasp on the top and we are totally done. So I'll just move this down. Actually, I'll probably spin it upside down here. And I'm just gonna pick up the back two wires and add a lobster clasp on one side and add a little loop to connect it to on the other. So you'll need two more crimps. I don't know how many were in this package. It looks like it looks like a lot, maybe, maybe 20. And if you've never used Softlex crimp tubes before and you got this and you're gonna be using them for the first time, you are in for another treat, more treats. <laughs> oh, the other thing I wanna do is I wanna measure my necklace out. So before I do that, let me spin it back around. And I originally cut 20 inches and I'm gonna wanna make my clasp. I'm gonna actually take, I'm gonna take two mini bead stoppers. You can use bigger ones too, but I have these two little ones here. And I'm gonna mark off um, an inch and a half on either side and put the little bead stopper there as my guide. And that'll make me have about 17 inches where the crimp will be and then when I add the clasp it'll add a little more a little more to my necklace where did I put my my measuring tool <laughs> oh it's on the floor <laughs> that makes sense Does, who else drops everything when they're beating I drop stuff just goes flying <laughs> off my table I think I need a bigger table but you know what? I probably would just fill it with more stuff. So what I'm gonna do is just do an inch and a half on either side. I'm using my little tape measure. and I'll just mark it with my bead stopper. Inch and a half, and then mark it with my bead stopper. Now I can add my crimp and look at the way I'm holding my necklace. Because I'm righty, I like to put my clasp on the right side. So I'm just gonna turn it upside down so that I can put my clasp on this side.
So crimp and then clasp. Take your soft flex wire, go back into your crimp tube. Just gonna wiggle it down a little bit. And before you crimp, you just wanna make sure that you didn't make your loop too small. You wanna make sure your clasp kind of has a little room to, to wiggle around. And then we'll do our, our crimping. Trim off the excess. And then on the other side, we will just create, so I can just let my crimp kind of slide to the bottom and then pop this off there and create a little loop. You can always add a split ring or a closed jump ring or something here, but you really don't have to. You can just create a little loop and connect it right to that. And then your connection would just look real simple. So I'm gonna take this necklace and put it on a neck piece for us. And let you see how it all turned out. So I probably have to switch my camera to up here. <laughs> Wowzers, that is so cool. Isn't that fun? And it's kind of nice to make the, the top part a little shorter. Why? That's why I went for more of like an 18, maybe even a little shorter than 18, so that um, you have enough space for your, your spider to dangle. Oh, he is so very cool. <laughs> I love him. Yay! Thanks. Thank you. Kristen. I love it too. I will think of all of you every year from now on. <laughs> so, how we got to get together and have a little trick or treat party and make this with each other. I love it. I hope you all did too. I hope you enjoyed the design and learned some tips and got to play with some new materials that maybe you haven't used before. Yeah, that was wonderful, Kristen. I think a lot of, I think um, a lot of our friends here were really excited about the Softlex crimp tubes, and the crimp tubes were the treat, and how to use the magic crimper was definitely the trick. So that was, that was <laughs> it is the trick, and you can always crimp with your with your crimpers that you like to use. But um, I'm just such a fan of the magic crimper that I, you know, I wanted to make sure that I showed everyone how uh, how I use them and how they work. <laughs> Absolutamente. And thank you so much for the spider queen with all these fun spider bags. Those were really, really fun. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Well, here we have in the waiting room, our next designer for the trick or treat jewelry making party. We have got Brittany Chavers here. Brittany, are you here? There she is. I am. And look, I'm, I'm dressed up like you guys too. Oh, my God. oh yay. Oh, fashion today. <laughs> you know, we didn't even oh. talk about that part. And I'm glad we all dressed up. <laughs> no, we did not talk. Well, I, I cheated. I saw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I cheated. It was so, but I'm, I'm dressed up in my JJBs and I'm ready. I'm ready to party. Awesome. You That's look so awesome. Cool. You look great, Brittany. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us here today. Yeah, I'm so excited. So um, I was going to have like my spotlight and then my iPad 
you know, video, videoing me, but apparently I don't have the Zoom app on my iPad and it was causing a whole bunch of problems. So you only have one camera today, but. That's all right. We'll flip it around when it's time. I think it's, you know, when we do these, when we do these events or when we're dealing with Facebook, as we've, as we've all been experiencing in this past, um, past few weeks here, right. that technology can sometimes be a thing. It can be a thing, but it's, it can, it can be a thing, but it's only a thing if we make it a thing. So <laughs> we just keep on rolling on and everything is always, everything's always all right in the end. Right. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. I don't use Zoom as often either. So I was kind of wondering how I was going to be with the two. Cause I, so even in the beginning, I was like, I'm not even sure I might have to, it, you just roll with it. Right. And make it, make it work. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I loved your project. It was so much fun. Thank you. It, Thank it you. really was. So oh, Kristen, Kristen has donned herself as the spider queen. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Brittany, did you have any Halloween traditions or fun Halloween aliases that you tend to lean towards on this time of year? No, I actually told somebody at work today, like, I like buying the Halloween stuff, but then it gets put in the garage and it's there and then something out of in my house so who knows what Halloween stuff I have but um yeah I have a bunch of nephews and nieces and I love trick-or-treating with them unfortunately I moved away from them so I won't be there this year but I think I'm gonna still dress up this year so maybe I'll dress Look Goldie at, up gonna I think say, she's on the floor somewhere <laughs> Goldie. I was going to say, I'm very impressed that you were able to whip that together after seeing us get started and you were able to I was find, like, I gotta find it. pull it out. <laughs> I was going to try and make the necklace along with you and then put that on. But then I was like, no, that's doing too much. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But I love what we can do here that even if you're, even if dressing up in, in a big, you know, flared up costume is not your thing you can make a piece of jewelry with some really cool themed beads and totally invi imbibe yourself in that sort of character like we just did with Kristen's project mm -hmm. yeah. definitely definitely well, oh, Brittany, I'm have... excited to see what you make today yes. what do we have in store share with us and then we'll let Kristen go and we can get to some more making yeah, so I'm going to be making a bracelet today and a pair of earrings, and we're going to do a little bit of wire wrapping, and I'm really excited because I haven't used Softlex that much, so it's cool. kind of a, little, a new little technique that I'll do myself. Um, I know the Softlex, Softlex ladies are, are well-versed in all of the cool things you can do with it, but I'm just kind of starting to learn, so I'm really excited that now I have all this stuff to play with. So we're going to make a, a bracelet and that pair of earrings. Cool. Well, Brittany, I'll let you go. And I'm going to flip it. Let's take it away. Okay. Hopefully I can figure out how to flip the camera. <laughs> so let me put it on my tripod and we'll flip and we'll get started. Yeah. There we go. There we go. You can see my, my hands. Um, you're and lucky you can't so see. Thank so much for being here with us. Hey, sorry, Brittany. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, oh, no, you're... totally. Okay. If you don't want to stick around on the Zoom, we'll still be going on Facebook. And I just want to say thank you from us here at Jesse James Beads and from everyone that's watching back at home. Thanks for taking the time to come out here and share your amazing designs with us and wish you a happy Halloween and a great weekend coming up here. Yeah. Happy Halloween to you and happy Halloween to everyone out there. Thank you again for having me and thanks for joining um, us over at Softlex to put this together for everyone. I mean, it was really such a treat. <laughs> it really, really was. <laughs> All right. So I will see everybody later um, and catch, I'll catch it over on Facebook. I haven't been able to see comments, so I'm excited to go over and see what everyone's talking about and watch Brittany. <laughs> Yes, from good. over there so bye everybody bye Kristen. Thanks, Kristen. great job thank you bye and now for some more tricks Brittany I'm going to spotlight yeah, yeah. your screen you're about to yeah. do okay so Kristen did a really really great job of showing everything that was in the kit so I'm not going to like duplicate her efforts but I will be using I'll show you what I'll be using and then we'll go into the project so I'll be using some beads out of the Halloween mix and then um, I will be using some beads out of this strand. 
which is just so happy. It kind of reminds me of Halloween, but it also reminds me a little bit of Mardi Gras. So like, it's just like a really nice Day of the Dead strand. And um, I'm going to be using a little bit of each of these three um, beading wires. So those are gonna be used on the bracelet. For the earrings, we're gonna grab our two little pumpkin charms, which are super cute and such great quality. And then you can choose which side you want. They're double-sided. So if you just want a pumpkin, maybe not as spooky, you can choose the plain pumpkin side or you can choose the jack-o'-lantern side. So I'm gonna use the jack-o'-lantern side today. And then the beads that we're using um, out of the mix for our earrings, actually a couple of them will be in the bracelet, but we're gonna use two of these, like I like to call them little sheriff star spacers. We're gonna use two of these um, black and turquoise looking beads. And then we're gonna use these two crystals that were in the mix as well. From my stash, I'm gonna use um, probably two jump rings. We're also gonna use two of the ear wires today. Um, six of the crimp beads and one of the um, clasps. So I will kind of move these off because I'm using these on the bracelet. And then for the earrings, we're gonna grab our little pumpkins and we're gonna grab our little turquoise and black beads. Oh, and I also forgot, we're going to use um, some of the chain that was in the, um, the kit. I'm not actually gonna use the chain itself. I'm just going to cut off two of these black rondelles. Okay, so these are for the earrings and I'm gonna do that really quickly so we can set up our design. I'm just gonna snip that off. Sometimes it hurts me to do that because the um, chain reaction is so pretty, but then we have some links that we can use in another project. Okay. And then from our strand, I'm going to use two of the bead caps in our design. So I was thinking, um, you know, Sarah said she's the spider queen. I'm trying to think like, I'm like trying to mix up my metals more and I've been doing it more and more on my channel. And I think we're gonna go with the mix queen today. <laughs> um, so we're gonna use two of these bead caps. We're gonna be making gold and silver earrings and um, we'll be making a gold and silver bracelet as well. So from your kit, you wanna grab your 24 gauge uh, craft wire. And I, I'm really bad. I'm really bad at measuring. Um, I kind of just eyeball it. Maybe we're probably not gonna need a foot, but I'm always scared that I'll run out of wire. And there's so much wire on here. There's 15 yards. So we're, that's 45 feet. We're good to use a couple feet for our um, project. What I'm gonna do is slip my little pumpkin on to my wire, just like that. And I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna line up the ends so they're, it's right in the middle of our wire. And those of you who follow me on my channel know this is one of my really popular um, uh, techniques that I use a lot because sometimes we run across wire that maybe a little thinner than we were liking or just wanna add a little bit more oomph to our project. So I'm gonna grab my wire and I'm just gonna start twisting. Okay, I'm just gonna keep twisting. And you can twist as much or as little as you'd like, but I'm, it's gonna start being a little bit more fine towards your end than it is towards the top, but I'm just gonna keep going and going <laughs> until it, becomes what I like it to become. And for some reason, I'm getting a lot of a twist here, but not quite in the middle. So I'm just gonna keep going. Try and get that to spin a little bit more. There we go. So this becomes our wire. And it becomes a little bit more sturdy while we wire wrap. I'm just gonna keep going until I'm satisfied. 
Okay, so we have a pretty long piece. I'm like I said, I, I kind of overshoot sometimes, <laughs> but it's good. It's good. It'll be enough for us. I'm going to slide on my little black rondelle and I'm going to slide that down because we had the four, or I'm sorry, the 24 gauge wire. It um, even doubled is perfect to go right through our little, um, our little uh, bead. So then what I'm going to do is take my pliers. Okay. And I'm going to wire wrap this as if it's a regular wire. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to treat it really any differently than I would if it was a regular 20 gauge wire. And I'm just going to start a wire wrap. So I bend it back, bend it forwards, and then I reposition my pliers and I kind of bend towards the back. Now, we will take a little bit of precaution instead of, you know, kind of squeezing this and wrapping like I normally would with a regular wire. I'm going to hold it a little differently so those wires don't get squished. But before we go that route, I am going to slide on one of these holes in the bead cap. So the bead cap is no longer a bead cap in this situation. It becomes a, um, a connector and I always slide it on the wrong way. So we're gonna actually slide it on by moving the back towards the beads and then it goes like that. So we've got a connector, if you can see like that. And then it's gonna be a little diff difficult to get it started, but I kind of hold it as if that bead cap isn't there and start wrapping around. You can use your fingers, you can use another pair of pliers. This wire is pretty malleable. Um, if it was a thicker gauge wire, I would recommend using, um, using uh, your pliers to wrap it. But like I said, it's pretty easy to get this going. So I'm just gonna wrap with my fingers. And there we go. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wrap one more time. A little messy wrap. We have that hanging off of our bead cap. And then I'm going to trim in the back and tuck anything in that's kind of, yeah, we're good, we're good. We don't need to really tuck. So there we go. And I know I did that really quickly. Um, so we're uh, thankfully have two earrings. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it again. So in case you missed it, I know there's gonna be a replay, but we're doing this live. So I'm gonna do it again for you. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the top. Sorry, just making sure that this is straight. Now you don't have to um, spin it if you don't want to. You don't have to do the, the wire, I'm sorry, the, the twist if you don't want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the top too. Actually, you know what? I think I did it a little bit different for this one. This one's a little different because, you know, you can do whatever you want. We're gonna go through like that, just like we did on the pumpkin. Line up our ends. And then twist away. And just kind of make sure that your wire's where you want it to be. We can always move it around a little bit, but just keep twisting. Brittany, we've got a bunch of people commenting how much they really love the twisting technique. Oh, good. I love, I, you know what? It really kind of extends your, your supplies, right? Because you buy this thin wire and sometimes you can really only use it in certain instances, but maybe you're in a pinch and all you have is 24 gauge or 26 gauge. This will really extend your supplies into another use. So you know, need, <laughs> need in the past has uh, led me to, to this point. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing for the top. 
I'm so glad everybody likes that. Just gonna go ahead and wire wrap. It's gonna be a little bit easier because we don't we're not wire wrapping it onto anything. And instead, see my my um, first um, thought is to go and grab it like you normally would with a wire, like with my pliers with a regular wire. But since it's twisted, I don't want to. It's a little bit more fragile. I don't want to untwist it. I'm just gonna put my two my pliers through it instead of around it, and then I'm just gonna do a little wrap just like that. And thank you also for showing us the beauty of a messy wrap, because I think that, <laughs> you know, we get into this groove of either making super clean wraps or making messy wraps all the time. And it's nice for those of us that are, that are accustomed to making the, the neato, the neat wraps to see how beautiful mm -hmm. a very organic messy wrap can look. Yes, definitely. And I think it, it actually works really well with like the, the um, mixed metal, you just, it's like unexpected, right? So you wanna see a little bit of a, a twist, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> so there we go, there's our little earring. And you know what I did? You know what I just noticed, Sarah? I put the wrong bead on the top. So nor <laughs> I was supposed to put the blue bead there. <laughs> well, that's what happens on live TV, folks. <laughs> So then we would just hang it right on our little ear wire and that closes with a little pinch from our fingers. I'm gonna make the next one the correct way. We have, I think we have plenty of time for me to do another one of these. Do you think that's okay, Sarah? Sure, I'm into it. Okay. I think okay. we can so, all- He's cute. It's so cute. You, but you, The way that you use that bead cap as a connector is just genius, Brittany. Got a lot of great ideas coming out of this Thanks. tank right here. Thank you. I, I, you know, I was, I was like, these are really cool, but I didn't, I really wasn't sure if I wanted an earring, you know, with a big chunky bead like this with the bead caps. And then I was like, oh, let's, let's just try and, you know, think about this outside of the box, turn our, turn our um, project or products into the unexpected. So worked, and it also kind of looks like the top of a pumpkin a little bit. So, all right, I'll try and do this one a little bit more quickly and hopefully I'll make it correctly this time. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, these are the things that I edit out on my channel. <laughs> so Brittany, real quick, for those that are watching and making along, is the, is the pattern that you're looking to go for the black bead on the bottom and then that yes. blue and black round on top? Yes. Okay. All right. But you know, you can use any two beads you want from the project or from the, the kit. Anything's gonna look good because all of these go really well together. Okay, I'm almost finished here. And then the more you try a project or more you try a technique, the easier it's gonna become for you. So sometimes I can just twist these wires really quickly and get going, but I wanted to slow it down a little bit today to show the, the technique. All right, so we got that guy on there. We'll start our wrap. And this hopefully will give you a little bit of time if you're following around uh, along at home to, to make your earring set as well. Okay, we'll thread on our bead cap. It's so nice to wire wrap directly onto your component also, instead of using jump rings. Yeah, it gives you, well, I feel like it gives a little bit more security and, um, you know, sometimes it's just a little bit more simplicity, right? You're not seeing all these different connections. I mean, sometimes it looks fine, but I like in this situation, I really wanted to just like, like only see the components, you know, not a bunch of what, uh, jump rings. All right, so there we go with that guy. And I feel like with these earrings, the wonkier, the better. <laughs> kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Jack Skellington and Nightmare Before Christmas. All right, so there's that piece. And this time we will for sure use one of these instead of um, the black.
Oh, I didn't twist. Getting ahead of myself. Okay, you could do it that way too. You don't need to twist. You could just put two um, wires right through your bead. And as I'm twisting, I'm slowly moving my fingers up the wire to elongate those twists and kind of control it so they're not getting tangled or bent while we're twisting. And we're keeping a little bit of tension there too. Okay, so now I'm just gonna slip on my black and blue bead. And wire wrap that guy. And then, like I said, this one will be a little bit easier just because you're not wire wrapping it onto to anybody else. Sometimes it can get a little awkward when you're trying to wire wrap onto another component. So then I'm just gonna swing that around until I feel comfortable with how it looks. I think that guy has enough. I will snip. Then you'll tuck in any excess wires. I don't really see any, there we go. And go. Sorry, <laughs> flipped out of the screen. Okay, well, here's our mismatched pair, but let's pretend that the, the other one has a blue top. <laughs> there we go. What do you guys think? Super cute. I love oh, I love that. Okay, well, I'm glad you guys like that one. Now we're going to go for we're gonna do a bracelet. Um, and like I said, we're gonna need our three colors of the soft flex beading wire. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave them on the spool while I'm doing this just to save myself some headache with um, finding like a bead stopper. Um, but I am going to use a few different beads from this strand, which we've already cut into. And then, like I said, we're gonna use um, these four beads from the other mix. So two Sheriff Stars and then two crystals from that mix. And I'm gonna show you the pattern that we're gonna use for the bracelet. Okay, so we need these two gold spacer beads. So those are gonna be at the end of our design. Then we're going to go for these like apple green glass beads. Put those right next to it. Um, then our blue crystals. This is going to be a very sparkly bracelet. <laughs> and I feel like it's going to be an interactive bracelet. And you'll know what I mean by that in just a moment. So then we're going to need these two crystal rondelle spacers, which are super duper sparkly. And they have that um, AB finish on them, Aurora Borealis finish. Then we're going to go for these two larger crystals, which I don't know if you can tell on camera, they have um, purple and green on the inside and they're so pretty. They're so sparkly. Um, and then we're going to take the remaining two bead caps that will match our earrings and put those on our big boy crystals. Um, and then we're going to take the two silver sheriff stars Put those right next to those caps. And then the star of the show will be our purple boho bead. So just like that. It looks like a big pile of beads right now, but it'll be super cute in just a few moments. What I'm gonna do is take the ends of all three wires, black, purple, and green. It really doesn't matter um, which color is next to which. You won't be able to to really um, guide them like that in this project. So I'm just gonna line them all up and I'm going to thread on all of our beads. This one is the one that might give you the most difficulty, but all, all of them really work or will fit on all three strands. Just gotta get them started.
There we go. Okay, and then we'll just work on down the line. Now, if you want to change up the beads, if you want to just use one color three times, or if you want to use just two colors or, you know, two purples, one green, whatever works. This is your bracelet. Definitely customize it whatever way you'd like. And our Crystal Rondell Spacer. These are, I think, one of my favorite beads ever. They're just so sparkly. And then we'll put on our big crystal. Oh, these are getting away from me there. And then we'll put on our bead cap facing towards the crystal. And our sheriff star. Then our boho. And then we'll just do the exact same um, pattern right up the other side. And they're getting caught on the ledge there. Here we go. I'm really impressed seeing all three of these soft flex wire strands right. fit through the bead. Right? Yeah, yeah like I said, this one's the, the tricky one, but they, you know, it really worked out. I was like, yeah, you go, go soft flex, go JJB. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. So there is the focal of our bracelet. So um, I think I mentioned at the beginning that I haven't really used soft flex that much. And um, I wasn't aware that you could, you know, like just leave the wire exposed. So that kind of gives me a whole lot of like design power, I feel like, because I've never tried that before. And if you want to, you can turn this into a necklace, but I, I don't know if I mentioned this, I'm doing a bracelet challenge right now. So it's a 30 day bracelet challenge. So this is day three bracelet for me. So um, what we're gonna do is you, you have several options. With Softflex, I've heard you cannot, right, Sarah? Is that true? Cannot the Softflex? I believe that is true, but I'm gonna let the gals and guys at Softflex company answer that one. So Chris, okay. can I Softflex comment? Can you not Softflex wire? <laughs> I thought I saw some people nodding it before. So. If you want your bracelet to just have this in the middle of your bracelet, um, you can put a uh, thread on a um, crimp bead, crimp it on both sides and then finish your bracelet. Um, I like a little bit more interactive bracelet. So mine is gonna be almost like a bangle and where I can move my beads around. I like to use them like when I'm in a meeting, I like to fidget with them. Um, I'm wearing this bracelet today. I move these buttons around, things like that. So um, mine is gonna stay loosey goosey on the bracelet today, but you could put your crimp bead there. And if Kristen is still there or Sarah's there, they can let us know. We could probably knot it here um, to keep it in place. But like I said, today I'm just gonna keep them loose. So I have um, a couple jump rings. I'm just gonna close mine a little bit for, well, I guess I don't need to close it, but I'm gonna try just to make sure. Okay. So I also have our crimp tubes and I'm going to need three for each side. I tried putting, you know, all three through a crimp tube and it worked, but I couldn't get it back through the crimp tube. So crimp tubes um, will not fit six strands, <laughs> which I think is asking quite a bit from a crimp tube anyway. So while I move these beads down, we're not worrying about the length of the bracelet right now. We're just finishing off one end of the bracelet. So I'm going to crimp each one of these um, strands onto my jump ring. So the funny thing is I've never used that crimper that Kristen was using and that thing looked pretty amazing. I'm just gonna use my regular old crimper, but um, I might have to check that out. <laughs> 
So I'm going to just pull this towards my jump ring and I'm going to crimp three times, one for each strand. Now, if you're not real great at crimping, I would say um, definitely try just flat crimping. I think it would be okay with a bracelet. Um, I'm going to try the regular folded crimp. So I place, um, I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, just making sure that my um, wires aren't crossed. And then I'm putting the crimp tube into the largest valley of my crimping pliers. And then I'm crimping down like that. Okay, and these are like the best crimp tubes ever. Like I, I've never really tried crimp tubes before because I was a little scared of them, but I jumped right in with these and they're really, really easy to use. So then I'm gonna just turn it 90 degrees and fold and then move it up my crimper. Okay. Next, I'm just gonna cut off my little wire here. Making sure that my main wire is not in the way because that would be not a good idea. And I have done that on camera before. <laughs> so we have our first connection to our jump ring. You can use a huge jump ring. I did try just crimping it right on to our clasp but it was, it was just a little too much for the, for the class pole. All right, so I'm gonna do that three more times on this side. Then I'm gonna measure the bracelet against my wrist. Since this bracelet's for me, I always measure mine against my wrist because um, depending on the bracelet, it always, like the, the, the fit on my wrist always changes. I can't rely on an, uh, like a, an inch length. Oh, goodness, okay. So I think what I'm gonna do for this one, instead of putting it around the, the clasp, I'm just going to crimp here and then string it onto the, to the um, jump ring afterwards. So just making it around the same size as the other loop. I gotta tell you, this wire is pretty great to crimp. Okay. Just making sure it's not Crossed, doing the exact same thing. Turn. Sarah, is that showing up well enough? You're crimping? Yeah, can you guys see what I'm doing? I can see what you're doing. And I also like the what your description of how you put the crimp bead first in the valley section of the crimp tool. Yeah. And then you can put it in the other section okay. because I think everyone has a different way of describing the crimp. <laughs> I've heard some really funny, funny ways. And I'm, I, I wish I could remember some of them because some of them made me like giggle like a little girl, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you were able to, because sometimes it's like so tiny and I can't really see what's going on on my camera. So I can tell that I'm in screen, but that's about it. All right. So I'm going to do my last one and it seemed to be a lot easier doing it while it's not attached to the jump ring. And then we're just going to slide the jump ring in next. Perfect. So it's just easier to manipulate. And I'm so glad you're enjoying using the soft flex wire and the crimps because you know, it's, it's nice to explore different mm -hmm. things out there. And everyone that's in the comments is saying that they really enjoy um, playing with these new supplies also. So I'm glad that that's been a, a nice, a nice treat. Yeah. And well, it is a treat. <laughs> <laughs> I get stuck, you know, you get stuck in your ways. Like, oh, I've always done it this way. So I'm going to keep doing it that way. But then you're like, oh, well, this is a cool way too. Oh, sorry. My camera um, moved a little bit. Oh, am I, um, my tripod took a nosedive and I need to replace it because I break, I broke it. <laughs> I tried gluing it back together, but she's, she's done. So exactly. anyway. <laughs> I use my 6,000. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going to put all three of these together and you can, you know what, go wild. You could braid these, Ooh. you could twist them, whatever you think you're going to like. Um, it's your bracelet. Do it, do it calls to you. So I'm just going to hook all three of these on if I can co get coordinated enough myself. There we go. And I'm just going to hold those out of the way because I don't want them to fly off while I'm 
closing my, oh, we probably need our clasp. That would be great. Put the clasp on. And just so everyone that has the jewelry, the trick or treat jewelry making party kits, the jump rings was were BYO BYO yeah. jump rings, and I don't know if we're using any head pins in these projects, but grab a jump ring from your stash. Anyone will do. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you didn't find it in your kit, you're not miss you're not missing anything. That right. I I'm just grabbing like two or three so I can close off the bracelet. Um, yeah, so there's our, let me just hit my camera with that. There's the, the connection point. I hope that's in, in focus. I can't really see. Yes. So I, I just love it. I love it. So, okay, now I'm going to measure. I don't know if I have a, a ruler anywhere, but I'm going to measure around my wrist, just kind of very loosely. So it needs to be about this length, about right there. And what I'm gonna do is just, hmm, this will be interesting. I'm gonna, how am I gonna mark this? You know what, I'm gonna grab a, um, so either a piece of tape or a little marker so you can um, know where you need to end your bracelet. Let me see if I can find one. Sorry for the noise. I'm looking through my supplies here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brittany Red Taylor says that she is absolutely bewitched by this. Oh, good. That makes me so happy. So that's kind of where I want my crimp to be or like the, the, the bracelet to end. And if you don't do it right the first time, don't worry. You can always fix your mistakes. Like last night I made a bracelet that's just a little too snug. And a, it, even though I strung it, what I can do is add another jump ring or you can add a, a second class. There's always something you can do to fix your, your, your issue. So don't, don't be too hard on yourself. It's supposed to be fun, right? <laughs> so, um, okay, I'm gonna get three more. We're gonna do the exact same thing. And um, then uh, I'm gonna put on a, a larger jump ring on this side because um, it's our closure. So sorry, I'm getting a larger jump ring. Um, we're, I'm gonna use a small jump ring like I did on the other side, but then this will be the closure for this side. Okay, so I'm gonna snip my wires off of the spool. Like I said, I always love working on the spool just because it, it eliminates the need for um, a uh, bead stopper most of the time. Okay. All right, and then we can kind of see my little black dot right there on the one strand. So I'll use that as my, my first one. So it's so faint, but the dot is right there. Just coming up the bracelet until I get to it. I kind of rubbed it off. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see, hopefully it's long enough. If not, I'll just add a bunch of jump rings <laughs> after I'm finished. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just crimp like we did on the other side. I wanna make sure. We're not crossing our wires here. Okay. Put that in the valley. And then we'll just, these are just the, like, honestly, it's like butter. <laughs> it's like cutting through butter. It's so nice crimping those. Um, because I, you know, being in beading, you don't always get the best crimps. You really don't. Sometimes it's really tough. So these are really nice. You don't have to fight them to get them. And it's, it's kind of nerve wracking live crimping. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, all right. And then I'm just gonna measure this against the other one to make sure that I'm where I need to be with my loop, like lengthwise. Okay. 
a little bit more length here. Okay, so that's about exactly where we need it. Making sure that my wire's not crossed. Okay, there we go. And we just have one more. Okay, that one was a little bit easier than the purple one. And there we go. Just make sure it's not crossed. Okay. And we'll snip, we're almost finished. And I'll just grab another one of these smaller jump rings. And we'll just string on our three little guys. in any order you please. Again, you can, you can even braid them or twist them or knot them, however you feel like. And then I will put this guy on. Okay, and here is a really fun bracelet, mixed metal extravaganza bracelet. <laughs> so I am super excited and I just love the movement. It's more like a bangle than a strung bracelet to me. And I think, you know, with the colors and the mixed metals, it looks really, really good with this, with this pair of earrings. What do you think? I love the mixed metals. I think it's so cool. Not only do I love the mixed metals, but I'm loving the color palette that you chose to use, Brittany. It's fabulous. It's so perfect with the soft flex wire. And it's just so fun to use the exposed soft flex with the Jesse James beads. They play very, very nicely together, as we can see with this bracelet. Yes. yes. Super cool. Oh, we have some really cool comments here. <laughs> Virginia says, do you talk to yourself out loud while creating Brittany? Do you talk to yourself out loud when you're creating and you're not making video? Do yes. <laughs> because I'm either like, that's not working or yeah. <laughs> very, hey. very vocal. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. Yeah. Virginia says she does it sometimes. Virginia says she talks out loud sometimes and her cats give her strange looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goldie thinks I'm talking to her half the time. So she comes over. I'm like, no, mommy's working. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I love how our pets at home are totally the assistants. They are like the ones making it happen behind the scenes. A hundred percent. Yes. And she, she heard me say her name and she just came over for a tummy rub. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Wick says that she does it too. <laughs> that's awesome. That love it. <laughs> 
I'm going to flip the camera around because if yeah, you guys want to see Goldie, I can show you. <laughs> so here I am. I'll put a little bit of light up here. Goldie, you want me to pick you up? Okay. So everybody can say hi. Oh, my hands in the way. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. There we go. There she is. Oh, the woman behind the scenes. <laughs> She's my beating buddy. She is so, so <laughs> sweet. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. She's like, okay, mom, that's enough of that. <laughs> no cameras, no pictures, so. please. <laughs> well, this has been a lot of fun, Brittany. I love the earrings. I love the bracelets. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm like so excited that we got to do this. I hope everybody enjoyed it or at least learned something. And if you didn't, at least you liked the commentary. <laughs> So yeah, I think that we all learned something I, between both of these classes today, were just so much fun, such great, great projects and, and so different from each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm really going to, I want to try wire wrapping that spider so badly. So yeah. I can't wait to rewatch the replay. Do you know what? This is funny. So, um, so this, this afternoon, this evening, we had Kristen Fagan and then Brittany Chavers on tomorrow, starting at 7 PM Eastern will be Deb Floros followed by Sarah Ayler. And it's really funny that the Softflex company threw in that plastic funky spider just as a, a, as a gag. And everyone was not fighting, so to speak, but that spider was a hot button item for the creators <laughs> to munch their projects. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see what Deb makes tomorrow. And I can't wait to see what Sarah makes tomorrow because I have no idea what she's going to do. Yes. So. so these designers, Brittany, Kristen, and Deb tomorrow all plan their projects out using the supplies from the kit. And then Sarah is going to design on the fly with everything that's left over. So those of you that have purchased mm -hmm. the trick or treat jewelry making party kits plan to be using all of your supplies. You will be using all of your supplies. Yes. That's why everything is said and done tomorrow. Sure. And then we will have, you know, I actually thought about, I thought about using like the cardboard. Oh, from wow. Paint that. Okay, Brittany, let's, let's go crazy. <laughs> that would be really cool. I love, that. So. I love the mix. I love mixed media. I like that idea, Brittany. That's well, <laughs> 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 And guys, if you have enjoyed this jewelry making party, if you like making and chit chatting with friends on the crowd here, if you enjoyed Brittany's really cool design aesthetic with these earrings and that very innovative use of beads and wire on the bracelet, do take a look at JJB Winter Workshop. Brittany is one of our beady elves who will be teaching this winter for a week long of jewelry making tutorials. This will be private, not hosted public on Facebook. And I will um, you can just hop on over to jessiejamesbeads.com and click on events to see, to see what's upcoming. Yes. Brittany, we so much. So much. yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be so much fun. Brittany's got earrings planned for us on that one. I'm not sure what exactly is up her sleeve yet, but we have a really cool supply set of supplies for that. Um, and I hope you like it, Brittany. I can't wait to see what you make. They're really cute colors. I love the colors. It made me super happy. Definitely reminds me of what you said it should be, the desert oasis. So very excited about it. Holiday in the desert. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Off the yellow. I love it. I love it. Brittany, thank you so much for being here today. We love working yeah. with you with Jesse James Beads. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I'm so excited you had me on. And I can't wait to watch the replay. I got to watch uh, Kristen's idea. <laughs> So fabulous guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow Thank here you. at seven bells, Eastern standard time. I have been your host, your ghost host, Jesse, Sarah James from Jesse James Beads. And we can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. Have a wonderful evening.